this is Debbie from Lime Diddy Design and thank you for joining me for Doodling with Debbie. I have my Daniel Smith watercolours in a palette next to me on my desk at all times and as such I reach for them most of the time. However, today I fancied a change and so I pulled out my Karen brush markers to colour this beautiful Magnolia background set from Simon's Stamp. I used only six colours on this card and thoroughly enjoyed experimenting more with the markers. I have a previous video of these markers, which I will link in the description below, which details more about the storage, nib, labelling and first impressions of these watercolour pens. As I mentioned, I only use six colours for this card. I started with Skin One, which I hate the name of, Burgundy and Cocoa for the petals, and then Curry and Olive Black for the leaves. Eventually, I bring in Oak Two for the flower centres. I have my very simple setup here, the markers, the stamp set and a piece of Fabriano extra white cold press watercolour card. I place the card in the misty and align the magnolia background stamp at a slight angle. This will angle the two large flowers slightly on my card base when I trim the panel down later on. I stamp the image multiple times with Gina K Whisper Amalgam Ink to get a good impression that I could easily see while at the same time being pale enough to not be noticed once coloured. I then started painting with the Karen brush markers by applying the paint directly to the card and then pulling out the colour with a damp brush. I used the olive black marker where I thought the shadows would be directly next to the petals of the flower and the curry marker which is lighter in colour with much more yellow to it over the rest of the leaf. I have noticed that the combination of Gina K Whisper Ink on Fabriano watercolour card does grab the colour from the watercolours so you will see as I paint that the lines are darker than the open areas. It's an interesting effect in that the lines pick up the colour that is being applied and so although it takes away from the no line look, at the same time the lines being accented in exactly the colour being used is an interesting side effect of this ink and card combination. I continued blocking in all the leaves with this olive green and curry marker combination. I'll play some music so that you can see the panel develop with all the leaves complete and then move on to the petals shortly. I'm trying to be more confident in my colour application and go in with darker, more concentrated colour from the outset. As such, I applied plenty of the burgundy marker at the base of the petals and mixed this with cocoa. The brown not only mutes the shade of the burgundy slightly, but it also deepens the shadow values too. Again with the petals, I used a damp brush to pull the paint out over the petal, lightening the value as I did so. Also, I use the Skin One shade to bring in a different colour over the lighter parts of the petal. This colour mixes with the burgundy to give lovely peachy shades, which are more in keeping with my chosen colour palette than brighter pinks. So ultimately, the brighter burgundy shade was mixed with cocoa in the shadows and Skin One in the highlights. The Karen brush markers are fabulously intense, but also quite bright for my personal preferences and so mixing them in this way I can get that amazing intensity but mute the colours down a tad to be more in line with my colour preferences. I must admit that although this card is quite bright and rich in colour for me, I do like it. If I was to paint it again I'd probably use slightly less marker at first and build up the colours with more layers.
For the flower centers, I bought in the ochre marker, which is a lovely rich yellow color, and I added touches of cocoa for shading. I also went back in and added a bit more depth of colour for the leaves because as they dried back they had lost some of their intensity. To get the right impression of the fluffy flower centres I used Faber-Castell polychromos and while I had them out I also added a bit of shading and definition to other areas too. A little for the shadows of the leaves, a few vein details for the petals etc. I also used a white gel pen to add a few highlights. The last time I splattered with white gouache and perfect pearls, I decided to use a palette and keep the leftovers to save waste. Before, I used to work on a glass mat and then clean up afterwards with a wipe. However, both the white gouache and perfect pearls reactiv reactivated with water really well and I was able to use them again. I also added paint splatter by scribbling the markers in the palette wells and picking up the colour with a brush to splatter over the painting. I trimmed the panel down to fit on an A2 card base and here you can see the scamp which is our 11 month old puppy popping in to try and run off with some of the paper scraps. Don't worry though, we didn't let him, we are so careful on what he gets hold of. For the sentiment, I've been dying to use this swoopy thank you from CZ Design. I love the fun font and thought it would contrast nicely against the more traditional flower background. I die cut the main lettering from Ivory Card and the background portion from Vellum. I added the letters to the vellum with little dots of Gina K Connect glue on the back. I added foam tape to the back of the painted panel and then for the sentiment I cut a tiny strip of foam tape and cut it into little pieces. I picked these up with tweezers and added them to the back of the vellum where the thickest part of the lettering were, for example where one letter meets another. I added lots of these tiny pieces of tape to the vellum to keep it in place and as you can see when I added the greeting to the card front you really can't see where the tape is. To finish off, I added Nuvo droplets and glossy eggshell pearls, which I held in place with Gina K Connect glue. You can see that I have a tin where I keep pre-made Nuvo droplets. I'll have to do a video sometime to show you how I do this, but basically I squeeze the droplets onto a slick surface, such as a craft mat, leave to dry overnight, and then pop them off and keep them in a tin. They do stick together a bit this way in the tin, but I manage. However, I saw that BB Cameron keeps hers in some press and seal, which I think is a fabulous idea. So there you go, a card using Karen Brush Markers Pro and experimenting with mixing the bright colours to mute the hues to a palette more in line with my preferences. On the Science Stamp blog, you'll find a coordinating blog post as well as details of the supplies I've used today. If you want to find me, I blog over at limedigitdesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time.